in Memphis, Tennessee. On Thursday, five fired police officers were arrested and charged with murder and kidnapping in the fatal beating of Tyre Nichols, a 29-year-old African-American man. Nichols died on January 10 of kidney failure and cardiac arrest, three days after his violent arrest following a traffic stop. His family shared a shocking photo of Tyre from his hospital bed shortly before he died. He was violently bruised and on a breathing tube. Earlier today, Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis told CNN she has seen no evidence police even had a legitimate reason to stop Nichols' vehicle. On Thursday night, a candlelight vigil was held in Memphis. Tyre Nichols was the father of a young son, an amateur photographer and a longtime skateboarder. He had worked at FedEx for the past nine months. I am Marshall Bomo for Gone Digital. All right. Um... Uh, Mr. Paul, welcome to the show. Uh, this is one of the most important shows we're doing today. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, again and again, we uh, I don't know how many times we already addressed this issue of police brutality in America. I want to thank you again for coming. Um, you know, first of all, wel welcome back and Happy New Year to you because it's been a, quite a long time since we see each other. Well, thank you for the inv invitation and I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, our digital digital uh, reporter, Marshall Mbomo, I, I think you uh, you have a chance to listen to it, and and you've been uh, tuning in in the, in the news. You know what's going on. Uh, you know the case. Um, if any um, any 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 uh, time you want me to play that again, I'll be more than happy to do that again. Uh, so this is a case of uh, police brutality in America. And this is not the first time, and I don't hope, um, not hope, I, don't, I suspect it's, this is not the last time. Why do you think this is happening and continue to happen, especially when it comes to, um, when we talk about police brutality, what I've been seeing uh, over the last 20 years um, that I've been here is that uh, it doesn't matter the color of the police officer. But it does matter when it comes to um, the color of the victim, you know, mostly African American and people of color in general. So, what is your assessment based on that video, uh, you know, that you just heard and 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 the the history surrounding uh, police brutality? Well, I think that when we look at the issue of police brutality, that um, it happens also. In fact. The statistics have shown it happens even because there are more white people in the United States, numerical wise, there are more white people that are being brutalized by the police. But when you look at the actual percentage of African American versus white in the United States, clearly there's a higher percentage of African Americans being brutalized than there are uh, the percentage of whites. But the question we have to ask ourselves is what are the police departments? Uh, are doing before they hire anybody and give them a gun. Uh, one of the things that, that comes to my mind is that I do know that police departments throughout this country have given um, special um, privileges from the perspective of hiring two people who have come from the military. Uh, they're the person who has been in the military get extra points towards being hired as a policeman. And I think that that may be very dangerous. And the reason why I say it may be dangerous is because I've seen uh, many examples of how people in the U.S. military disrespect civilians while they're at war. And if that's a mentality that is being that has been promoted inside the military, why would we think that there what, a, what a second what a second mr paul I, I mean the issue the issue of police brutality is is we doesn't you know this it's been here since since the beginning of of the united states and some people even said that um uh police was created to to police um free slaves that's some people uh are saying that that you know the fact mm -hmm. that we are police you know, generally it was the idea came upon you know, you have in this set of citizens that now used to be slaves, now they're free. We need some a body that will be able to control, to continue to police them uh, and, and control their activities and, and also, uh, you know, to, to keep them in in, in, in situation of, uh, uh, you know, if you will, oppression. Uh, but 
that I have no 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 link whatsoever with any any um, any 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 war. So you suggesting no, no, that uh, I know that fact is maybe yeah. correct that that there's a lot of uh, that mentality when they come from home um, because you you know we have some evidence uh, some some documents showing WikiLeaks being one of the source to to see those images where you can see clearly how you know military personnel attacking civilian. So you were saying that these people that are coming back with that set of mentality and joining the police can be also displaying this kind of behavior. Is that a, your assessment? Yes, I mean, just because they change uniforms don't mean they're gonna change the way they see themselves in relationship to the civilian population. Uh, and that's the problem. I think that's part of the problem. We have a country that uh, allows its military to ab abuse civilians outside of this country. And then we bring those same military people back into this country and get them to change uniforms from the military uniform to a civilian police uniform. Why do we think that all of a sudden their way of treating civilians is going to dramatically change? And I, I, I noticed that the media don't even ask this question, which I think is an extremely important question. Because this has been a number of human rights organizations have argued this point about the U.S. government's military and how it has been extremely abusive to civilians and even to the media. And then you watch the United States give billions of dollars to different countries. And I'll give one an example. Israel has a long history of where its police and its military have been very abusive to civilians as well as to the media. There was recently a woman who working for Al Jazeera who was straight out shot and killed. And then when the Israelis were asked to explain it, they claimed that there was fire, someone was shooting from that direction that she was located towards the military. And it wasn't true. Yet you do not see the United States uh, holding up aid to the Israeli military as it violates international law in shooting at reporters or the civilians. So why would we think then that the U.S. government is really that concerned about violation of human rights? with people they give guns to, whether they're in the military or whether they're in civilian police force. There's too many examples. As you look at George Floyd, I would dare say, probably out of the four policemen, at least two of them had come from the military. And it might help explain why they did what they did against George Floyd. And if you look at some of the other cases, where people have been brutally abused or killed by the civilian police departments in this country. If you check their background, you'll probably find many of them had been in the US military. And it's a carryover of the mentality that is allowed to flourish inside the military as to how they deal with civilians, wherever they may happen to be. And that mentality carries over that when they put on a civilian police uniform, that mentality doesn't change. And I question whether or not any police department truly even tests them to really see how much they, that mentality is exhibited in these soldiers, former soldiers, who are now policemen given guns. To patrol so, so you know, here in the United probably, States. You're probably making a, a, a good point, but uh, my my thing here is um, it's the fact that uh, you know uh, if if you go in the military and you display uh, some kind of misbehaviors or brutality against civilians, that that might be something that you uh, that might be the mentality that you came up into the military with, uh, because there is no way uh, you know the military would promote such such behavior. And, and, oh, yes, and, 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 
Oh, I, well, I dare disagree with you. The yeah. military could accept, and it has. And in fact, you like I said again, whether we go all the way back to the Vietnam War or the first Iraqi War, or the second Iraqi War, or the way the military has treated people in Syria, the way the military has treated people in several different locations around the world. Uh, no, I believe from what I've seen and evidence I have been able to observe that the military kind of turns a blind eye to that. From what I and I think that that's something that people here in this country need to demand that their elected officials in Congress really do a thorough investigation and follow up on that type of investigation to see, in fact, why is it that the U.S. government allows for this type of thing to happen over and over again and then think it's not going to follow its way back onto our civilian streets here in the United States. It's a violation of international law. It's a violation of U.S. law. That's one of the reasons why I believe the police department quickly fired these policemen and even had them put in jail. But the reality is that does little for the family of a victim that have been either brutalized or killed by the police. Well, so, so um, you know, you probably heard that um, these five uh, police officers uh, are being, uh, you know, um, fired and probably in jail right now. What, yes. what is your take on that? Uh, the take on the, 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 you know, over there, I think it was only uh, maybe 20 days. 20 days uh, later, they have, they have, uh, enough evidence to 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 uh, um put this 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 gentleman behind the bars so i want to see um the, the fact that um you know you see do you see this as a maybe a uh uh you know uh, some kind of a beginning to uh, starting to send a, a clear message is this a, a blueprint to you no. know um to, I, to I want see it being a little too late the time the people should have been addressing this issue was before they were given a gun and put on the streets to operate as civilian police. The time to address that would have been before they were given a gun and put into a military uniform to operate as a military person. That the United States seems to not really care about abusive action done by police or by the military, both U.S. military or even military that the United States give billions of dollars worth of military equipment to on a daily basis. And a good example, like I said again, was the reporter that was killed by, um, who worked for Al Jazeera inside of Israel. But there's many cases where that has happened, where people have been shot and abused by weapons paid for by the U.S. taxpayer inside of Israel that, that, that is totally uncalled for. And it's high time that the United States needs to use our tax dollars to really begin to address the needs of the people of this country that they're not doing. And here you're doing the same thing over in Ukraine. And the issue that I find really uh, irresponsible and unforgivable is that there's no attempt by the U.S. government to even audit how many of the weapons that have been sent to Ukraine has even been um, put on the black market. Well, before we get to that, we probably will uh, uh, touch base on, on the U Ukraine situation because I would like to know, uh, actually, I want to know um, uh, what your take on the fact that uh, you know we are talking about stopping the world war, but it looks like uh, when it comes to the actions, uh, you know, action don't really fit uh, the narrative of of peace in Ukraine. But coming back here on this domestic issue, of police brutality being around for for a minute, you know, uh, you know, police brutality before police brutality, it used to be just brutality toward black people. Uh, uh, you know, you, and you know what I'm talking about. Slavery is the, the, the worst of, of cases when it comes to brutality. So you have slavery and then the Jim Crow's where, you know, uh, everything belongs to another group. Uh, you know, black people in this country don't have access to it. If you do, 
If somebody cuts your readings, a problem, you get beating. If you go to a restaurant where you're not supposed to be showing up, you get beating. Uh, you know, if, if you are, you know, drinking in a fountain with some, you know, if our brother, uh, white brother and sister of drinking, it, it was against the law. And they, I'm talking against the law, meaning this is a situation protected by the law of the United States. That means the government is aware and openly allowed it to happen. So I agree with you when you say that um, it's a possibility that, uh, you know, the government know what's going on. And you give it a case over Israel. Uh, that lady that you say was shot, um, I, th I think there was some investigation going on. But that was not the first case. You can go on and on on those kind of abuse going on. And usually we don't, you don't see that a lot on the media. And there is no... Uh, you know, signals sent in by the United States to say, listen, we, we're happy to give you for weapon and, and money to protect yourself against uh, a Palestinian uh, that doesn't have the level of equipment and military support like, like, like Israel. But if you cross the line and, and go and, and, and use this weapon on civilian, then I, I think uh, we have to sit down and review every, at least that conversation could take place, uh, could um, take place in 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 uh, the relationship we have with uh, Israel. I think it will kind of bring down some of the violence that that we see. They they have uh, you know when you see a protest, you know some of the minority uh, protests in Israel mm -hmm. usually reprimanded by uh, by the police as well. But I want to be focusing on on our domestic um, uh, you know violence here, police brutality crisis in America. Um, are you saying that there's no there's no way this problem will, will go away? Because when I was asking you about the blueprint, when I see the way, uh, you know, this five police officer, all of them blacks, was put it behind the uh, behind the bars in jails, uh, in jail, I was thinking, hey, listen, this is maybe the beginning of something here. Maybe uh, the government and the police uh, chiefs in those areas. Maybe can look at this and say, hey, "Listen, and the only way we can tackle this issue will be to make sure that we we address the issue when it happens. We we'll be open and 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 trans transparent with 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 these families to bring about peace because right now it's a distress. And for you and me and others uh, and 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 the, the, the folks, the, the parents of this young gentleman." to see that all over the, the, the news, over and over, it creates some kind of trauma, you know? So so uh, what yeah. can the United States do in order to, to bring it to the it's end to this? After the fact, it's been after the fact, time and time, it's after the fact with George Floyd, it's been after the fact with so many people. We have to talk about a proactive policy, not a reactive policy. And the reality is, is that how is it that these police were allowed on the police force in the first place? That needs to be addressed. How does a police department have five different policemen and not have not even one of the five stand up and tell the other policemen, stand down. We need to end this right now. This is not the proper procedure. Not one out of five. You have five out of five violate this man's human rights. That should tell you that there is a clear problem with the system of policing in this country and is it and in Tennessee, because it just doesn't happen in Tennessee. It happened up in Minnesota. It's happening in, the, in Maryland, in Baltimore and other places. You know, it's not just in one location that we have this problem. This is a very systemic problem throughout policing inside this country. And the so, so you are you, are you are you saying do we you saying that the reason why uh, we we know on this is just because uh, you know the event was caught on camera, and uh, and you suspect that there's more of this kind of a, uh, you know interaction with a, a civil citizen born almost every day. Without did it, if there's did no it not happen with George Floyd? Did it not happen, with George Floyd? Of course, we have, I mean, the gentleman that has been the warrior that has represented countless cases over and over and over again, the same result happening to these his clients. 
you know, same results where people are being abused over and over again and too often being killed when other police officers are standing right beside them and do nothing to stop the policemen who are carrying out their violation of human rights against civilians inside this country. I mean, I remember there was a video of a couple of years ago in Chicago where a police officer gets out of his car. There were already six or seven policemen already on the scene with their guns drawn. There's a man with a knife, a pen knife. And what does this officer do? He empties 15 rounds into one civilian. 15 rounds. The man was on the ground after the second shot. Yeah. And he continued to shoot him. And so none, what, of what officers, is none of the officers standing around this man went to stop him from shooting. They allowed him to empty his gun. So what does that say for those other officers that allowed this man to do what he did? Sure, he got fired. Sure, he went probably to jail. But the point is, why were these other officers not protecting the life of the civilian lying on the ground being shot? So this is clearly a mentality, not just in Tennessee, not just in Chicago, not just in Minneapolis. This is a mentality across this country. And it needs to stop. And the people in this country need to question who controls your police? Because in my personal belief is that the group that controls the police in this country are the business bin in the area where those police come from. How many so, times so, do you see so if, if, if that argument is correct, uh, Mr. The Paul? The major businesses in the community be treated the way this man was treated in Tennessee. Right. But, but my not? thing is, here's, here's what I want to know. Uh, if we not know, because you know, whatever violence that resulted to this man to, to 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 just uh, you know uh, l uh, lose um, um, uh, you know die, uh, what that benefit? If, if if your job is to protect and serve, and you probably have somebody else uh, behind the scene, uh, you know, making sure that whatever you do something like the NS crime or NS act, you know. In the society is is fine. I think what this benefit is that benefit some anybody? If this guy you know passed away, well, well, probably well, again, the parents I, will, will put some charges. So how how that benefits anybody? Well, I guess I see the major role is from what I've seen. The major role of a police uh, police officer in a police department in this country number one is to protect business. Number one is to protect business. I have seen whole communities get burned down, residential communities get burned down, and let that crowd move anywhere near the business. And you see a huge police force there to stop them. Number one interest of the US police, civilian police throughout this country seems to be number one, to protect business first, to protect uh, property, just like they did during slavery when slaves were considered property. Number one role was to protect the property first. Not the civilian, but the but, property. But there's a little contradiction there too, because if, if slaves used to be like property themselves, so yes. why is that all of a sudden, you know, do you think they used to protect slaves the same way they protect uh, those um you know, object properties? No, no, the, pro the owner of the property, they were working on behalf of the owner of the property. They weren't there to protect the slave and getting their freedom. They were there in protecting the owner of the property, which they saw as the uh, owner of the slave, and bringing the property back to the owner. So their main number, job, number one job is to protect business first, not civilians. Business first. And so that's just like you said, when they first started police, their first job was, was to go out and find human beings who had been enslaved and escaped from that slavery and brought back to be put back into slavery. So they weren't protecting the slaves. They were protecting 
the ownership of the owners of the slaves. So, so in this case where we have a uh, five five police officers that happen to be uh, uh, black black officers, all of them, all five. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how can we explain the, the, the psychology? Uh, like I said before, it, it, you know, based on my own experience, I don't think, uh, you know, it, it, it does matter whether you're black or white. Um, Let me police put it brutality this way. against minority is just, just um, you know, uh, the victim is already, um, I think being being black or minority, um, uh, uh, brown people, I mean, that is probably what, what matters. Because okay, if black finish. people themselves are supposed to understand the experience of black people in this country and go ahead and, and do the same thing that we been thinking maybe this is a you know a racial issue issue. So, so what to what to say about okay. this? What I have to say is this. I see the way our system is set up is like a train track. If you got a train track going from Washington, DC. That track goes to New York. I don't care who the engineer and how good that engineer is. You will not end up in Chicago because that train can only go where the tracks are designed to take it. And what I'm saying is our legal system is not designed to protect the interests of civilians. Its number one design is to protect the interests of business. Period. And if they but, but in this case, in this case, the gentleman, Terry uh, uh, Nichols, it was not trying to steal something. It was this is just a regular traffic arrest uh, uh, stop. He was not doing anything that was you know you know uh, you know uh, uh, suggested to the police officer that he was trying to damage a property or or steal something for. It was just you know that that is a. A traffic uh, stop, uh, something that should never happen. That somebody have to leave, lose, um, to lose his life based on a simple traffic stop. So You're you know, I understand. Here. I understand the history behind police. Um, you know, uh, the policing the you know uh, minority in this country. But in this particular case, you know, it's, you know, the the officers are black, and the black man was not doing something that would require them to kill him. You know, that's my point. During slavery, we had straw bosses. And what was the role of the straw boss? To make sure that it could get the maximum production of the slaves. He was the one often with the, with the whip, who whipped the slave, and they thought that the slave was moving too slow and not producing at the speed that the owner of the, quote, so-called owner of the slave thought they should have been doing it. It wasn't often a white person whipping the slave. It was an African doing so. So again, it's back on that train track. If you got an institutional system set up to protect the interests of the business as being primary, then in fact, what happens to civilian becomes secondary or even third. And this is the problem we have with the way our system of policing is done in this country today. They're not there to serve really the public, but to serve the interests of corporate first. Number one, corporate first. And they even got to the point where they stereotype certain people. If he's not walking around with a Brooks Brothers suit on or some fancy shirt and tie like you may have on right now, He's automatically considered suspect as a possible threat to someone's business. And if the police number one role is to protect business, they will act accordingly. And that's the problem. Yeah, but in a, in a, a, again, uh, in this case, I, I don't I don't believe that there was any um, property. Uh, Did he have a you know, did you have a certain yeah, town? It, it, there is a there's a mentality that needs to be addressed. And, but my uh, question you to know. you, did he have a certain town? Or did he no. look like a homie on the street? You know, not, not a homeless person, but a lo local young man on the street. The one that the system pretty much say, oh, these are the guys who opt to no good. These are the guys that probably would rob 
some store or break into some store or do this or do that or do the other. Yeah, My but when you, you that, when you hear when you hear the the um, the the when you watch the video, uh, my, my thing is, is, is I'm, I'm appalled uh, when I see the lack of empathy, the lack of empathy. And somebody don't have any guns. You go over there, pepper spray them, you know, anytime you, you, you want to. The guy, is, the guy is on the floor. This is not unthreatened. He has nothing to threaten the police. He is on the ground. They've been, you know, one or three or maybe five of them on him. Uh, the lack of um, empathy, and that kind of remind me of uh, the, the the case with R Rodney King, where the guy is, is bitten and and is almost tied, you know, uh, cry for his for his life, uh, you know. But you continue; it's the lack of empathy in 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 some police officers, not all of them, but you know, a lot of this 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 bad, bad police officers have to be called out, you know. And and I, and I don't I don't I don't care if you know some people will come and just oh you know what. Once you say Black Lives Matter or you know whatever Lives Matter, it's also police officer Lives Matter. I, I think if we don't fix this situation, this crisis is ridiculous uh, for a country as powerful as America. You know, this is something that can be fixed. And if the ongoing problem is still there, is because those people make decision are not doing enough to address the situation. Uh, hold on that thought, uh, Paul. We're gonna do a, a quick transition. And then we'll, when we come back, I'm going to let you um, probably uh, follow up on that. But also, I would like to take you um, uh, to uh, to Florida, where the governor position is not to allow, you know, uh, you know, uh, the black history and everything related to be, uh, you know, a, a part of the education uh, for, for kids in this nation. So the, the, these are the issues that we, we really have to address uh, to understand, uh, I mean, what, what is behind all this, why we continue to... To, to to have this situation and um you know that would be uh, you know when we come back all right welcome back mr paul pomfrey you know uh paul pomfrey is actually um in a long long-time uh, activist, a uh, social and political activist, um, you know, uh, somebody who's fighting not only for, for you know, folks here in the United States, but also internationally, you know, as a matter of fact, he's co-founder of the Friend of, of Congo. Well, you know, before we took that transitional um, uh, break, I was talking about, you know, I don't know if you have something you want to add before we get to that, um, but, you know, when talking about police brutality. Yeah, any any anything you want to add to that? Again, I think that we have to look at the police department as an institution, and we have to look for what is the real role, the number one role of a police department, the same way what is the number one role of the U.S. military. And it's to protect property, not human rights, but property. That's its number one role. And we can watch and see the history of the U.S. military. Why did the U.S. military go into Iraq both times? Why did they go there? Because they felt a threat to the U.S. dollar. Dealing with uh, Saddam Hussein talking yeah, but, about... But that, is, is, is that even relevant to, uh, to the, the conversation well, we're having? Yes, about because it's the, US, the U.S. government is set up on a national, state, and local level. To protect property is number one. And so human lives become secondary to property. Human lives become secondary to property. They will protect property at all costs. And this is why you will see time and time again where there may be a disruption taking place in a city. And the police are brought up to ward off the business district and push the disruption into the civilian community. It's as if to say the civilians living in that community is not as important as the businesses where no one's in at the time because most of the business would be closed. That if there's going to be destruction in a community, let it be in the civilian part where the residents live, 
not down in the business district. We see this happen over and over and over again. But yet we act like, in fact, oh, well, that's not really that important. But it is because it Absolutely. helps to show the nature of how the police structure is set up in our country. In the same Absolutely. way with the U.S. military, same way. They're looking at protecting not the dollar of the little person, but the dollar of the super rich. That is what is the way the system is set up. And it's disproportionately set up that way. Absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, you know, that, that is a good point. But my thing is, um, what, what, you know, based on that video that we all, um, you know, so uh, I just believe that so there's something profoundly, um, uh, you know, uh, rooted in this society that make us, you know, cannot, uh, you know, uh, fix this. And I, I know they, they have the power to fix it because the, the way uh, action was taken 20 days after to put this, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, criminal behind the bars. Uh, I, I think that was something good. And, and that if all police uh, chief across America uh, does uh, do the same thing, I think uh, they will. They, it will send a clear message to uh, to anybody with a badge, you know that uh, you know your 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 first role, just like you said, is to protect, is to protect and serve the American. Let me but, uh, let me. Uh, we, we, I have to challenge your thought on that because you're talking yes. about what a policeman chief did after the fact. Yeah, but what listen, listen. There's no way. The there's no way before the fact. In other words, yeah, but. You know, but that there's no psychological evaluation that could have been done to understand how these people are thinking and how they saw the re and respect human life. But listen, a, no a normal, listen, a normal, a normal human being, a normal, if you are a normal human being, you will have some kind of empathy. You don't have to be a police officer or a military person. But the typical no, my, no, my, 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 listen, if, if I put you, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, if yeah. you today become a police officer, I don't think you'll be killing people just because you're, you're not officer. understanding my point. My point I'm making so, is this. Yeah. It is the responsibility of a police department to make sure that they have people there that have the, the con they have the way of thinking that allows them to be able to uh, operate in a humane way. If they don't have that kind of mentality, they should never have been given a gun in the first place. They should never have been given the opportunity to have a taser in the first place. And so if you're saying that there, there are no psychiatrists or anybody else that can identify this type of behavior, and when you have five out of five policemen operating this way, something is clearly wrong with that department. And what he well, does after the fact doesn't change the fact that the man is dead. So, so what we, what we've been seeing in America is that this this issue is don't just belong uh, to a Tennessee or uh, to whatever place it is. It's, it's a, it's a, this is a national crisis. That's police brutality. Not, we yeah. here here in Maryland, here in Maryland, we are still dealing with police brutality. Okay, and as a matter of fact, Maryland incarcerate incarcerates more black male than any any other places in the place. They they you know make Mississippi look bad. So this is Maryland, one of the most progressive. I mean, to some places, progressive you places. You can't be progressive, progressive. and do that. You yeah. can't be progressive and do that. <laughs> Okay. Well, you see what I'm that, saying. That, so, that, so people. You can't. Well, be yeah, I mean, what? And, and what, do I, what you're saying, Marilyn is doing. Yeah. So my my thing is 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 people seems to be progressive until they you know in, until some of them go to the police to see where their their true faces. Um. I mean, my thing is uh you know there's a lot to be to be um uh, uh, you know uh, deal with uh and and the training maybe uh, is part of it. But if you are a bad person, um, or if, you know, it is hard for you even after training because I know the police are trying to do the best they can. But if you this get this guy, when you see the video, it looks like those police they were attacking this guy as if it was a like a street fight or something. Then like how that. can you say on the one hand? Yeah, it's a fraud, man, the how can you say on the other hand that 
How can you say on the one hand the police is doing the best they can, and then you turn around and no, talk no, no. about how terrible the police were? My, no, no. What I was what I was saying is that the police, as a department, I know they have training in place. I know they're trying to do the best thing they're trying to do. It's just like having I, I kids. Disagree. I give I an disagree. example. I give an example. I be, I give an example. You know, I have kids at home. I try to install in them a good behavior. I tell them, don't do this, don't do this. We're in the school. Make sure you respect this, you respect that, and do your work. I give those instructions to all my kids. But guess what? Do you think all of them go out and then, you know, act exactly how I how, how told them to, to act? No, they'll go over there and then don't do their work, don't do whatever they will. They do whatever they want to do. Because beyond instruction, beyond those uh, training, is still that human being are different. The, the way we process uh, stuff are, are you saying that all your kids do that the same way? No, no, no. What I'm saying. Okay, the reason why I'm saying that is you got five different policemen. Not one, not two, five different policemen. And not one of them try to stop the police from what they were doing. Not one out of right. five. So you can't yeah, tell me yeah. that the department was doing a good job. It wasn't. But 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 my thing Period. is when you when you're in a situation, when you situation, I'm not saying whatever. Uh, the involvement or you know, lack of, of, of stopping somebody doing something right, I'm not saying it's good. What I'm just saying is that it seems to me that you know the, 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 they have a mentality of protecting each other that you already know. You also, there's another mentality where they have to, you know, the silence. The way some your colleagues do something, you don't, no, no, you don't, I'm you don't not, say I'm anything. I'm not accepting any of these points you're making. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not. No, I'm not I just I'm told not you. I, these points you're making. I, mean, see my point, I just. Point. My point yes. is that if you have a police department that does what it's supposed to do, then the policemen would have upstand, would uh, withhold. I mean, would stand for what is right. Period. So not hang do you out, think not, not do what's good for their buddies when you see their buddies doing something wrong, and especially you're not, doing something that jeopardizes someone's life. Their first, you, their you, number one job is to protect the public. That's their number one job. Is to protect the public, and all five of them failed miserably for doing that. That's why they bond behind the board. Miserably, and so if you got five different policemen in one department that operate that way, then one can believe that they aren't the only five. Well, that that's a good something point. Something that's probably well spread within that department. So for you that's to try to point. turn around and talk about how good this department is. No, and that's not what I'm saying. This and how they did that, I no, disagree that, with you. <laughs> that's not what I'm were, saying. If they were good, yeah. they would not you, have five policemen you participating. Can, you can this, check my and record. They give us a lie to try to defend what they did. Listen, listen, my brother. You can check my records. When I, when I ran for office, police brutality was number one priority on 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 my list. So let's talk. Uh, but, let's but, talk. I'm but, listening to what you just said today. No, no, no. I'm but let to me. What Today. You keep defending Let, the police department. No, 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 no. My, my judge, my, there's no basis to to defend this the police department when you got let, five different policemen participating. What was the, the reaction of an, We've in, seen, of an innocent civilian? Now, now, hear me out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you this question. Uh, you can, you can, you can, you can check this stuff across the 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 country. When you see that the, the kind of uh, quickness, um, the efficiency, when it comes to uh, you know, you know, putting these people, um, you know, by police behind bars, there's something something to be applauded. Considering what's going on across the country, we've been situ we've been having a situation where we have evidence of I'm wrong. Hear me out. Hear, hear, hear me. Hear, hear, hear me out. Hear me. Hear me out. There is evidence. You know, in some cases, we're gonna have evidence that there's wrongdoing going on, and it would take forever before the police chief takes the decision. When I okay. saw how, you know, how quick, when I saw how quick, let me finish my point. I let you talk, brother. When when you see how quick this police chief uh, took action to to not only uh, you know uh, to, to 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 terminate terminate this um, this this officer, and then. And and put them and put them in jail. 
I think that's that's that will send a good message to other police departments that hey, listen, a, a, a new day, a day is, is is have come in America. I want all of them to act that way. Maybe because we can blame the situation all day, but what I want us to do, especially you, with a lot of experience of GR, is to bring some kind of suggestion and solution. What well, can we do? Okay, here's my point to you. These policemen saw what happened in George Floyd's situation. Well, not only were they fired and charged, but convicted and put in jail. Didn't change it from happening again. So they obviously did not take the proper procedures in assuring that that didn't happen. Now, what would happen if it was your family member it was your son that died and the policeman sat back and said after the fact oh i fired them and threw them in jail would you make you feel much better no would you feel really much better after your son was dead not at all but but still why are you, you, you... So why are you then acting defending a police chief who didn't do his job no no a i'm not i'm not no no, no I, I didn't see you are saying what, how much how you giving them credit for what they're doing after the fact. And my because point is, the, 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 if someone's going to get credit, then they need to be proactive, not reactive. They okay. saw that, what other police departments have done over and over and over again in this country. I, I believe police, I believe that's a, that's, that's a solid police, point. Yeah, that's a, a police, police point, police proactive. Right. Proactivity. Proactive right. is, well, is the way... Yeah, proactive is is the way to go, and I, I I agree with you. We have to be more proactive. We have to put make sure that we do something before a lot of this interaction, you know, a federal interaction happen. That is, I agree with you hundred percent. Now, if you hear uh, like Trevor Martin mother, she was painfully in a crash when a son was killed by a vigilante that have no business killing his son, you hear all of these mother and fathers, they are assessing the situation, understanding there is a crisis, but as a community, as a, as, as, a, as a community of people, we also have to think about, okay, what should we put in place moving forward? Because this is not gonna be something that we're gonna be fixing overnight. Because it involved, it yeah, involved. a long time ago. They said it needs to be community control of policing. That means okay. no corporate control of the police, but community control of the police. Right now, throughout this country, you have corporate control of police. Why do I say corporate control? Because they're the ones that finance the political campaigns of the politicians who set up make decisions as who will run the police department, make decisions as to how those police departments are properly trained or not trained and financed or not financed. And so you basically have a system in this country where the corporations are running the show, not the civilians. And people say, well, what do you mean? Uh, we had an election, yes. And you best believe the people who ran for office and he even got a chance to even run for office with people who had corporate financing backing, period. That's right. Unless they That's were right. a corporation of their own and had enough finance to run the, their own campaign. But other than that, they're corporately, the large real estate companies of the city, the large retail companies of the city, the, the chamber of commerce of the city, they finance the political campaigns. That's right. Of these politicians. And so they're beholding, number one, to the people who finance their campaign. Right. They're not beholding to the citizens of the community. And that's the problem. We have a right. system here where a small minority of people, and many of them don't even live in the community that they control, they just own businesses in that community. That until the civilian population recognize that we got to take corporate money out of elections, we will continue to have these problems over 
and over and over again because their job is number one is to protect the interests of the corporation not the not the community absolutely uh, listen it's it's a it's it's a real it's a real issue uh, the prison industrial complex you know the the jail system is a, is actually a business and um but uh, you know I, I can understand that uh, somebody being arrested for no reason put in jail because a jail uh, being a lot of these jail or private jails um you know and that would generate money for the corporations uh, that you're talking about that probably i can i can understand but you know brutalizing uh, you know a civilian uh, a citizen um you know without no reason to the point that you have to kill him that is what i'm having a serious problem with okay so like i said um you know we we uh took a quick, quick you want to say okay. okay add something real quick no, before we change one last one. give me give me two examples of a um a a wealthy business person okay that out of all the thousands of people who get abused by the police department in this country, give me two examples of a wealthy business person that has been treated that way. Well, uh, you know, maybe maybe not not wealthy, but I can tell you somebody prestigious as a you know um, um, uh, 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 Louis Gates, um, uh, A.K.A. Uh, uh, Skip, uh, is a, 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 a eminent well-respected professor at Harvard University. Uh, he was brutalized. He was, he was he was from, not, no, he was not brutalized. All he was told was he could not go into his house. Well, the, the he degree... He was told that he had to leave his house because he was, was trying to break into his house because he didn't have a key. And their assumption was that he was not a resident of that community. And again, the police function was to protect the interests of the wealthy who lived in that community. And so that's why he was escorted from his house. Okay. My point I'm saying is he wasn't beaten. He wasn't shocked by, by, by the probes. Okay. Uh, no one shot him. He was just simply escorted away from his house with his protest. Okay. So what, a, what about, what about Mr. Paul, what about, what about if we, understanding the situation because you know we uh the people that have uh children that's that's exactly what we tell you know tell them if you have um, a police stop you be respectful the, unfortunately we have to have that talk you know if you have black kids in general because you know you you make that point from the start that uh there's a lot of brutality or a lot of violence to uh our uh you know white brother and sister as well the statistics when you see the, the statistics it looks like you know what they you know there's a lot of violence to uh you know uh you know our white brother and sisters um although you, some of the video don't don't don't, don't come into the don't come, let me finish you. let me finish my point sir yeah. let me finish uh, you know although those videos don't don't make the news but it, it, it is also true that you know um you know the brutality to uh, black and, and the minority of uh, brown people it's been historical you know we've talked about this already it's been a, a, a historical and plus the fact that you're not putting that argument saying that uh, police brutality usually uh, is a phenomenon that only is addressed toward poor uh black and brown people so you know no, if you ask that. me a question that's over that's how many that. But when when you ask the question of how many uh, wealthy people that I've I've seen being brutalized, that's exactly addressing the same issue that I'm saying. So you know, you if you ask me that no, question, you say there no those, poor white people. Are you saying there no poor white people? No, those white people that are brutalized or poor, they're well, not wealthy. Not you didn't say that. that. You that's said that's black and brown people only. I talk I about wealth, I talk about wealth, wealthy business people. You're talking about just race, okay? And no, my, no, point, no, was, my yeah. point was, it's very simple. We have a system in this country that protects the interests of the super rich, period. Right. Number one, that's it. All right? And so they will go after poor whites. They will go after poor Latinos, poor Asians, even middle class poor or whites and Asians, as well as blacks. 
But my point is, is that we have a system that is corrupt because it's set up to protect the interests of the wealthy. It's number one. As much kind of crimes you may see a person like a Donald Trump create, you will not see the kind of abuse done against him before he even became president that you will see with a typical middle class or poor, black or white. Now the question you have to ask is why is that? Because we have a system that's tilted towards protecting the interests of the wealthy business interests in this society. Okay, why? okay, point where they, 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 They're the ones that finance the political campaigns of the people who write up the rules. Well, well taken. We we have to move to the to the because we only have five minutes okay. left. Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, to move quickly to uh, you know move to um, to Florida. You know, black studies AP class is being banned by dissentist government dissentists. What, what is your take on that? You know, because for him is he, he don't want you know he, he says that uh, the reason being that um, police brutality. Uh, uh, can uh, I mean cast as uh, aspersion on police? So for him, that's the one of the reason. That's that's why I took that case to uh, to Florida. What is what, what what is your take on that? Well, obviously this man wants to run for president, and okay. so he's appealing to the racism in this country. He's also appealing to people like Clarence Thomas, who's in denial of racism so he's not just appealing to white people he's appealing to people who see themselves representing rich white people as their main role in life and so we have to be very clear and in, in my opinion is say okay we'll do the ap class on history we don't have to say it's black history but history and talk about the real history and give a complete analysis of the history itself. You can't do the history of the United States without talking about what happened to Native Americans, what happened to African Americans, what happened to the Asian Americans in this country. So my point is, okay, so we won't have it as an AP course on black history. Because in my opinion, when they started black history in the 60s and 70s in this country, one of the biggest problems I had with it was that most of the people that actually took the course were the ones that probably least needed to have taken the course. And those were African Americans and whites who understood the importance of understanding that part of the U.S. history. So I think that, that what should happen is they should have a complete U.S. history course taught in AP. And when you do the complete history, you have to talk about the role of this country in dealing with people of color, starting off with the Native Americans, and then the African Americans, and then the Asian Americans in this country, and compare that to the treatment of European Americans who came to this country. That would be the best result. And so uh, him going after just AP, uh, African American history, no, talk about U.S. history, because if you really talk about U.S. history, you're going to talk about African-American history. Absolutely. You know, and say so you put it in its proper context. Absolutely. Listen, man, um, it's only two minutes left. I wanted to, to really uh, send my uh, deepest uh, respect and condolences to the to the precious, um, you know, Nichols and, and, and the Wells family. Uh, nobody should, you know, no parents should be, um, you know, uh, bearing their own, you know, children, or own child. What happened, you know, is a very um, sad uh, situation. We just pray and wish and work hard, you know, not just pray and wish. We have to work hard, you know, to see this uh, problem stop in our lifetime. So I, I want to thank you, my friend, you know, always on top of your game, uh, you know, your contribution. Uh, don't be a stranger. Come back to us. Um, you know, uh, I want to thank you again for for being here discussing this this current you know issues that are actually affecting our community. So again, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, uh, we're gonna play uh, uh, you know this video, and I want to say um, 
uh, goodbye to you and uh, probably we will be back here tomorrow uh, on um, you know you know uh, you know trying to trying to take on some you know issues that affect our community okay mr paul pomfrey is an activist uh, social uh, i mean uh, local and international activist that you know continue to do a fantastic amazing work here at home and abroad so my friend i look, look forward to speak with you another time thank you very much and good night to the audience absolutely Thank you.